You think I'm a cranky old bastard? Wait until you meet the next fella. This is The Righteous Bo Jambo, and it's time to talk about Van Morrison. Poor old Van Morrison. He's been out there for 56 years now making, for the last 30 of them at least, fundamentally the same record to varying degrees of success. He's very good at what he does. Cranky, curmudgeonly, completely askance at the world. So that makes him a bit like the slightly crazy Doc Martin of the Celtic pseudo-mystics. But he likes dogs better and doesn't have ears that stand out like the handles on the FA Cup. Despite having produced half a dozen of the essential albums in the classic canon, he remains a cult figure and shows no desire to be anything but respected, but not really loved, familiar, but unknowable. Let's take a quick look at the works of this most peculiar of R&B recalcitrants. Here's how it's going to go down. Van has made a lot of albums, too many to review or even talk about all at once. So we're going to resort to the second lowest form of YouTube video, the tier ranking video. Van's career divides into four broad periods, 1967 to 1974, the Wonder Years, 1975 to 1987, the decidedly odd years, 1988 to 2002, the Am I Still Relevant Years, and 2003 to 2020, the not really, but it's okay, just shut up and sing Gloria years. In order to keep things manageable, I'll take each album from a given period and shuffle it into the tier that best represents its merit in the catalogue. The tiers are... Nineteen sixty seven to nineteen seventy four, the Wonder Years. Morrison's Wonder Years were characterized by a restless energy to range his music as far across the spectrum as he could. Early commercial considerations notwithstanding, Astral Weeks is probably the most beloved commercial flop in the history of the classic canon, even despite its undying cult which it fully deserves, it has barely sold 600,000 copies in over 50 years. Morrison shifted focus consistently during his best years, from freewheeling folk jazz on Astral Weeks, to a rusticated R&B on Moondance, to New Orleans on Band and Street Choir, Country on Tupelo Honey, classic 1972 singer-songwriter on St. Dominic's Preview, Bonkers Mystic sings Kermit the Frog on Hard Nose the Highway, and that's kind of a problem. Having set the bar so high at the start of his career, mere craftsmanship from that point on was always going to disappoint. 1968's Astral Weeks might be the most overrated album ever, but part of me is still in 1984 and hopelessly in love with it. The grand sweep of Madame George, the thrilling rush of the way young lovers do, and the menacing mysteries of Slim Slow Slider are just some of the almost constant stream of highlights. Moondance is a smouldering, sulfurous gem and one of the best albums of the 1970s. It should have had three or four hit singles from the title track, and it stoned me, glad tidings, but it wasn't to be. Into the Mystic is a long-serving fan favourite, and Caravan was the cornerstone of the closing suite on 1973's masterful live album It's Too Late to Stop Now. Beat and Fleece is a record that, in a perfect world, no one would have to live without. Simply made, beautiful, endlessly mysterious and criminally unknown. 
It's an album, it's hard to pick out individual songs from as highlights. It's more like stretches of music that flow into each other and are occasionally interrupted by track bands, with Morrison in the very best voice of his career. If you take nothing away from this video and you haven't had the pleasure yet, go listen to Veed and Fleece. Cupolo Honey is glorious stuff from Morrison's Golden Age, a timeless rumination on roots, home, joy and love. Unified of theme, singular of voice and gorgeous in its execution. This is a collection of many small wonders and one huge marvel. A master artist in his heyday before each album became just another paycheck. St Dominic's preview is also near perfect. It's only Gypsy and I Will Be There being merely good and not great that holds it back. It's a summary of the journey so far, echoing Moondance and Band and Street Choir and Astral Weeks, but it also predicts the next album with the wide-ranging and organic textures of Listen to the Lion and Almost Independence Day. Blow On Your Mind has some very good work, some fascinating directions and some material that shows he was still reaching as a writer. It also has the notorious brown-eyed girl which Van has spent 50 plus years simultaneously disavowing and living in nice houses that have bought him. Band and Street Choir has some stonkingly good stuff, and Domino, I've been working, Call Me Up in Dreamland, I'll Be Your Lover Too, and some tedious hippie vibes that hold it back. This is a solid, workmanlike effort where Morrison and his band seem relaxed, funky and confident. Hard Nose the Highway is frankly unfathomable. It's wondrously ambitious, the title track is great, but just too much of it doesn't work. A lot of the songs have good ideas and Morrison's voice is great, but his lyrics lapse into some kind of stream of consciousness or psychobabble all too often. The instrumental passages, while frequently epic in scope, lack any real melodic ideas. Suffice to say, it killed his career momentum stone dead, but perhaps critically, it's due for a re-listen. The usually prolific Morrison took three years off after Veed and Fleece, largely to reassess his life and career following his divorce from one Janet Planet, or Janet Rigsby as the court papers no doubt state. What followed his return was a period where initially his work scaled to familiar heights, but soon degenerated into the kind of music you hear in physiotherapists' waiting rooms with lyrics that probably made perfect sense at the time. To him. Still, these albums, Beautiful Vision, Inarticulate Speech of the Heart, A Sense of Wonder and Poetic Champions Compose, have many devoted followers who think they're the best work he's ever done. Into the Music with its fun and joyful side one and incendiary and carnal side two is effectively Moondance 2 Electric Boogaloo. Not a bad moment on it from the 1-2-3 barrage of Bright Side of the Road, Full Four Scale and Stepping Out Queen, to the final receding echoes of you know what they're writing about. Common One is my favourite Van Morrison album, above even Veed and Fleece. It's warm, funky, hypnotic, at times incomprehensible, and conjures up difficult ecstasies in mysterious emotional landscapes. Like Van says, sometimes it ain't why, 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 it just is. Beautiful Vision doesn't want for good songs, Dweller on the Threshold, Cleaning Windows, Solid Ground and the title track are all very fine indeed. What it wants for is a less sterile and more exciting production. This will become a killing issue on subsequent albums. Also, Morrison's peculiar spirituality, which he simply expounds but doesn't explain, is making the songs more lyrically obtuse and in some cases, it's easier just to make up your own meaning. A period of transition has a lot of interesting ideas, but you'd think between Van Morrison and Dr. John, they could cook up some R&B. Inarticulate Speech of the Heart has some pretty stuff on it. Higher Than the World is an all-time Morrison classic, but it has too many moody instrumentals that rely too much on Morrison's competent at best saxophone and far too much intrusive synthesizer to overcome its flat production. A large swathe of Morrison's sizeable cult loves no guru, no method, no teacher and puts it amongst his best work, but I just can't warm to all the spiritual oogly boogly. It aspires to an astral weeks level of navel gazing, but again, Morrison's mystical cant and the new agey production get in the way of some not unpleasant tunes. Wavelength I hate beyond words. 
Too many songs have no focus and ramble on. Morrison's lyrics are absolute piffle, and there's an odious whiff of disco about some of the tracks, the egregious Natalia especially. And some of the tracks are just plain awful. Hungry for Your Love, Checking It Out, and the far over long Venice USA come to mind. The opener, Kingdom Hall, is lively, but you can't understand a word he says. Thanks to Wavelength, I would say that apart from the Beach Boys, I can't think of an act whose worst work is so far beneath the merits of their very best. A Sense of Wonder is a slightly more organic sounding update on Inarticulate Speech of the Heart. It has one cracking song in Tour Down a la Rambo, but it has nothing else to recommend. The threat of a lawsuit right on release meant Mose Allison's If You Only Knew had to be added to the album to substitute for W.B. Yeats' poem, but if anything, that helps because it at least rocks a little. Poetic Champions Compose is little more than New Age elevator music with no memorable songs, in spite of Morrison being in good voice. 1988 to 2002, the am I still relevant years. Relevant? Probably not. The problem for Morrison is that he's an old dog and he and his audience don't much stand for new tricks. And because he did so much in a mad rush in the first half dozen years of his career, there were very few unexplored back roads on his musical map for him to travel. Now living again in Ireland, Morrison had started to settle into a comfortable and profitable rut of comfortable and profitable album tour, album tour cycles. Enlightenment is an album of good songs that seems to serve as a kind of letter to home from Van, letting us know where he's at with all things. He's still a prickly cuss, but he can also write a tune when he puts his mind to it. Real Real Gone rocks out like nothing since into the music. So Quiet in here more effectively expounds Morrison's spiritual outlook than anything in the last 20 years. The title track has a wry self-knowing to it, and there's a sweet clutch of little pop songs towards the end. Balanced, thoughtful and brimming with craft, Enlightenment is as good a point as any for the uninducted to get into Van Morrison. As I intimated in the introduction, five largely interchangeable middle-tier albums say a lot about where Van was at at the time. Each one of them has at least one killer song, Fast Train from Down the Road is an all-time classic, and the production, especially on Back on Top, has a bit of bite to it. He'd found the kind of rock legend cred you can take to the bank. Hymns to the Silence is huge, ambitious, interminably long, and unfortunately cursed by bland and unengaging production. This is also where we first encounter Van's inability to stop moaning about everything. Too Long in Exile is an album that has no apparent reason, conceptually or commercially, to exist or to talk about any further. I can't even be bothered insulting it, it's so bad. 2003 to 2020, just shut up and sing glory years. Poetry always requires context and there's a particular piece which describes Van well in this phase of his career. I'd like to tell the story behind. In the early 1990s, Van bested Shane McGowan of the Pogues in love and won temporarily the affections of celebrity journalist and green-eyed beauty Victoria Mary Clark. McGowan responded as only he can with this immortal couplet on his album The Snake. Victoria left me in opium euphoria for a fat monk singing Gloria. Clark promptly dumped Van and went back to McGowan. They're still together today. McGowan's barb is a neat summation of Van as he enjoys the long drift off into the sunset since his last meaty album, Down the Road in 2003. Occasionally the old fire still flares in Georgie's belly, but too often it's the same old go-go and the same old badness with increasingly cranky fulminations against the ills of the world as he sees them. His best from this period also happens to be his latest, Three Chords and the Truth, which finds him in fine voice upholding Harlan Howard's famous maxim and still capable of craftsman-like song smithery. It's his best in over 25 years. It's a long album, but hardly a slog, with the title track, March Winds in February, and If We Wait for Mountains, as pleasing examples of Van's take on the new normal. Again, much middle tier work, largely because the good songs there, and there are some very good ones, are mitigated against by either Van by Number songs that piss and moan about this and that. No one who isn't especially famous has ever complained as much about the imposition of fame as Van has, or songs that try to duplicate his earlier acoustic styles but lack the energy. 
What's wrong with this picture has some rocking R&B and a masterpiece in Meaning of Loneliness. Keep Me Singing is pleasant but hardly challenging set. You're Driving Me Crazy has some good ideas in a small jazz combo setting that are worth pursuing, which he does on The Prophet Speaks, but to diminishing return. Pay the Devil is a collection of great songs that Morrison sleepwalks through. Roll with the Punches is a borderline tier 3, there's some tough blues on it, plus Jeff Beck's on it, and Van is in really good voice, but some of the choices for his covers are pretty uninspired. On Versatile, Van does better with the standard songbook than Bob Dylan or Rod Stewart did, largely through making some interesting choices, but tempers that with some trite and obvious selections. Magic Time is a lazy outing. The record doesn't even have the courage to be bad. It's a record made for 60-somethings who wear Birkenstocks and long socks to music festivals and complain about how loud everything is and how they can't sit down in the tents. Keep it simple, despite being Van's first top 10 album ever in the United States, it's also possibly his most forgettable, indistinguishable in tone or intensity from Magic Time. Born to Sing No Plan B does have a few interesting moments, but loses a tear for that terrible, terrible album cover. And there we have it, a buyer's guide to the vast and occasionally confusing catalogue of Van Morrison. I hope you found today's presentation to be interesting and that it piqued your curiosity. Do come back to me with any errors, omissions or misjudgments you feel I've made. I'd be more than happy to hear about them in the comments below. Given that, it's time to take a plate of biscuits. Here in my hometown, it's definitely Tim Tam weather and a cool beverage and to reflect on the music of what has been a consistently fascinating career for Mr. Van Morrison. Nice one, Carlo.